this is not going to work. This is way too big. I want to thank everybody for tuning back in today. Listen, this is a 13 shank chisel plow. Normally it takes 10 to 15 horsepower per shank to pull one of these chisel plows. I'm going to put this chisel plow behind my LS, but I'm going to cut it down first. I'm going to turn it into a seven shank chisel plow. I'm going to show you how I do that. So stay with me. So here's the plan. This section of the chisel plow, all in bolts. This is what hooks up to your three point. All the shanks are set where they are right now and they're, they're fine. I like where they're at. So we're gonna leave them all in those locations. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this portion, the three point, which unbolts from this chisel plow and I'm gonna move it over to this location, okay? And when I move this over here, that's gonna leave me one, two, three, four shanks. This will be the middle shank. One, two, three, equaling seven shanks. So basically all I'm gonna do is move this to here. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back in and I'm gonna cut this portion of the chisel plow. And then I'm gonna cut this portion of the chisel plow. I'm also gonna move the gauge wheels over, but I'm gonna end up with a seven shank chisel plow. Now, some people might say, well, why don't you just pull them off the edges and, and then just use it as a seven shank chisel plow? Well, this, is, this chisel plow is really heavy and I really would like to get it down to more manageable. By doing this though, as well, I have the opportunity to possibly turn this side into either a five shank or a three shank chisel plow. Now I have use for that, and that's why I wanna do that. The first thing I gotta do is move it because I need to move it from here to where it's a little closer to all my workspace and all the, all the tools I need. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move this three point hitch. We gotta move it over. So I gotta get it loose. I'm just gonna take and, and bust it all loose. Um, and then we'll pick it up and move it over to where I want it. Okay, I've got most of it already disconnected. I need to move this part over to where we talked about, where we talked about before. Basically it's gonna go right here and it's kind of heavy, but let's see if I can get it over there. <clears throat> All right, okay, that's where that's gonna sit, right there. So often I find myself being a one-man show, trying to do this work by myself. So one of the things I'm having problems with is some of the steel's too heavy for me just to hold up with one arm and put the bolt back in. But you have to be ingenious sometimes, you have to think. And all I'm gonna do is take a bungee cord, a heavy bungee cord, that's not a light bungee cord, and I'm just gonna put in that hole over there so it just kind of holds that in up for me. That way I can at least get this up here and get the bolt through the holes and in place so that I can get it started. And there you go. I'm gonna go put the bolt in on that side. I'm gonna keep moving along and then we'll show you how we're gonna straighten this up and get it uh, all put together. Oh, this thing's heavy. Okay, we got a little problem. I need to do some adjustments. Okay, so I ran into a little bit of a problem. I tried to move these in a little bit and, and try to put them on the inside of this shank right here. The problem, I, and, and it fits, but the three-point hookup uh, for the arms does not fit. So it's not an issue because I can still do this. This is, this is not a problem. I just have to take the gauge wheel off now and I have to remove this bracket that the gauge wheel sits on. And when I do that, the holes are already drilled in the, in the metal um, in this angle iron, it's already drilled. So I can just hook the gauge wheel back to this piece. 
So we're gonna, I'm gonna get on that. I gotta get this gauge wheel re removed, get that piece of steel moved. Then I'm gonna move this piece over. Uh, I've already moved, I've already moved this other side and it worked out just fine. It worked out perfect. Uh, not an issue. This is not an issue. It's just, uh, it's just a little kink that I didn't see uh, as I was going along here. Um, but these things happen and uh, you just work your way through it and you keep going, you don't stop. So here we go, I'm gonna get on that right now. Okay, I've got everything in place. I need to put this final piece in. Uh, it's very heavy. I'm gonna put it in by myself and hopefully I don't get hurt doing it. Um, of course, it'd bring my ratings up. I'll probably get more subscribers that way. So it's the next day. So what I had to do is I had to move this three point system over to the edge because it lines up very well this way. And now I'm gonna to have to, after I've moved this over, this is all square, this is all squared up. All of this is squared up now. And that's some of what was uh, not shown yesterday. And basically all I did with all of this is I took a framing square I squared it all up, made sure it was straight, and then I bolted it down. Today is the last part of this. You can see how the edge of this is set up here. Uh, I did have to take the I did have to take the gauge wheel off temporarily. Uh, we are going to put the gauge wheel back on, but if you look here, the bolts holes in this frame is already here. We're just going to hook the gauge wheel back into that. I have the same situation on the other side. Right here, you'll see that the gauge wheel holes are still in this, this framework here. Okay, so we're just going to hook that back up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to cut this thing off. And basically I'm going to be cutting it off about right here. And then I'm going to go on the outside of here and cut this off about the same distance as it is on the other side. Uh, and we'll cut this off right here. And with, before I do that, I have to put something in between here. Now what I'm going to do is use the gauge wheel framing that I have to keep this together because I don't want this to separate because once I cut, once I cut this and once I cut this, there is nothing holding this from separating. So I'm going to go ahead and just put that, that framework back in there for the gauge wheel and it should hold it together. So I'm going to get started on that and I'll bring you guys back in a little while. I marked it a foot off of this uh, part of the three point. It's a foot off the three point over there. It makes it about 84 inches total length. And we're going to cut this. I'm going to start this with a grinder. Down. So there you have it. I cut this 13 shank chisel plow down to seven shanks. What was the purpose? Why? Why did you waste a 13 shank chisel plow? Well, I can't use it the way it was setting. So I made it to where I can use it. I think a lot of our problems nowadays is we just are wasteful. Uh, I can't buy a seven shank chisel plow for what this chisel plow cost. 
um, you might be able to find one of these chisel piles laying around in a field or something. Uh, somebody had a, a large farm and they were running a 130 horsepower tractor and had a chisel plow, plow like this one behind it. And you want to use utilize that chisel plow, you can cut it down to make it fit. Now make sure that this section of your chisel plow, your three point system, is not too high. Um, this is a larger frame tractor, so it's able to it's able to accommodate this chisel plow. Uh, these plows are set up for much larger frame tractors, so they set a little higher. So you want to make sure that you're not going to get into that. Now I'm going to put the gauge wheels on it. I haven't done that yet. I'm going to do that at a later time. All I'm doing is bolting them on, so it's not something you're really missing. But look, I've got another plow over there now that I can turn into a five shank. If you'd like to see that happen, you'd like to see how I do that, then, you know, put a comment down below and I will look and see if I can get that together. I want to thank everybody. Until next time.